Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. With me today is the Grand Master, the worshipful Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge, Mr. Daryl R. Smith, my brother. How's it going? I'm good, my brother. Good to see you after all these years. It's a blessing after all these years. I'm glad to see you looking well and doing well. Same to you. We grew up together. We grew up in the same hood, and That's right. look at us now. <laughs> and who knows where we go from here. God, God is good. good. That's right. Tell me about yourself, uh, Daryl. I'm going to call you Grandmaster, so I'm going to give you your props. So tell us about yourself, Grandmaster. Well, I'm born and raised right here in the Dayton area. Uh, went to Jackson Elementary School, <laughs> left Jackson, moved over on Delphus Avenue, went to uh, Westwood Elementary, and that's where we all conjugated. Right. Uh, and then left there and went up to Rolf High School and uh, left Rolf and went down, graduated from Patterson Co-op and continued on through uh, several colleges and matrices, so um, in diamond grading, gemmatology. So okay. now I've been working for Five Rivers Metro Parks for 14 years Okay. and doing my uh, community service work, so to speak, with uh, Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, where we have 4,000 Masons and 2,500 Eastern Stars that we're under. Right Give now. me the definition of Masonry. The definition of Masons is there's speculative Masonry where, let me go back, let me say operative Masons used to lay out the building and the work and they did stonework back in the, in the days. And, masonry. Right, they did Masonry, but now we are speculative masons that we do work for our communities, our churches, uh, philanthropy organizations, and we are outreach for a lot of charity that goes on within the community. Where did Prince Hall come in at that? Prince Hall came in in 19, well, March the 6th, 1775. Okay. And it's ironic, we just celebrated our 240 years anniversary, uh, Prince Hall Masonry is older than the United States and older than the black church. You know, I see, um, <coughs> excuse me, I see uh, on different programs uh, on, a, on a daily basis, somebody's always talking about masonry or masons and the secret lodge and the secret handshake and the secret this and the secret that. and and making it look like it's something that is not necessarily the case. Um, how'd you get involved with it? Well, masonry um, is a way of life. Uh, my family has a rich history and legacy within the community. I got involved by young people go where they see young people. Okay. And my friends, uh, I was involved in, you know, in the music industry for a while. Booking, sure, I remember. And, and had a great social social life so all of a sudden my friends start disappearing and I'm asking where are they at and he said well they're over there with the Masons well back in the old days you know the old Masons didn't recruit or ask you to, to join they looked at you and if you ask how I could become one then they would accept you and, mm. and go through the process but right. Masonry as it is it's a way of life and it's what we do every day uh, in our communities that's why you didn't see a lot of our people uh, as leaders. Most of our Masonic leaders come from the church. Right. Most of our great leaders from the day and time from, are from the church. So with that being said, from first day in Little League uh, to my father, John R. Smith, Deacon Alvin Freeman, and I could go on and on, they were my inspiration. Aaron Moss, Jr., you know right. Aaron Moss, Very well. most worshipful past grandmaster. But they found the time to take care of their families and spend time to nurture, educate, and teach us how to be young men in the community. 
You know, I spoke at Shiloh uh, Church some time back, and I wasn't on the program. Uh, David Webb, who's the president of the Funk Museum Hall of Fame, and I were there. <clears throat> and when I got the microphone, everybody was, ah, oh, that's Turk Logan, which was warming within itself. But what people don't know is I have a rich history at Gettysburg and Hoover because of playing baseball at first day in Little right. League. That place looked like Crosby Field back when we were kids, man. That was the most beautiful baseball diamond had to be in the city. And I'll never forget, I was a first baseman because I'm left-handed, so I didn't have to make that turn to second base. And the ball was coming at me, and it took a bad hop and popped me right in the mouth. And we were playing hardball. That's we didn't right. play, that was a hardball uh, diamond. And, but I had a great time over there. There was a restaurant called Pedro's that was right there oh. on the corner of Hoover and Gettysburg. Yeah, those conies. Yo, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I spent much. I'm, I should have bought stock in the place when I was a kid. And so when you say first day in Little League and, and, and Jackson and Westwood mm. and Roth High School and Roosevelt and Dunbar and, and, and those great schools, um, it brings back a lot of good memories. And when people ask me about masonry, uh, Grandmaster, uh, I tell them it takes a good man and makes them a better man. Absolutely. That's, that's the perfect answer. That's right. and, that's, and that's what we do. We try to instill certain qualities in individuals, uh, but people watch what you do. They don't listen to you. They, they watch how you conduct yourself. Yeah. So that's why that, that part of it is real important for us. Well, if a young person Man, masonry's for men, Eastern stars for women. Right. If a young person has expressed an interest who doesn't have a background, but we say, well, how can I become a mason? Is there a process in 2015 that we go through now? Absolutely. We still have our process to screen individuals, to take them in, and to find out why they're interested in being a mason or Eastern star first and foremost. We want to know how much they know about our legacy, our customs, and our traditions, you know. So they have to study. The, yes. That's they part of study. the educational component. Because there's have. an educational component, and that's what I'm alluding to in the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. And with anything that you get involved in, as large a scale as the Mason or the Exhibition Center, you should know something about it. You should do some research and know about it, and you should be able to study. Tell me how important education is to the Funk Center and, and Exhibition Center. It, it's critical. It's a critical component because we're doing partnership uh, with um, our Pythagoreans, our youth group. Okay. Our youth group here in Dayton used to be called the 11 letter chapters that we just resurrected here this year. Okay. And and that comes from the name of the Ohio players. All right. And the reason for that, the uh, Diamonds and uh, Chet and some of the original Ohio players Marshall, were, yeah. Marsh, they were part of the uh, Pythagorean Drum and Bugle Corps. Okay. So that's, they come up with that name, it was years old, but as it relates to the Funk Hall of Fame, we have to give them the background and the knowledge of where we've been and where we need to go as a community in supporting this rich legacy and the history of funk music. So there's a same, there's a connection there because, you know, the, the Funk Hall of Fame obviously is going to be probably Brick and Mason. Oh yeah. You know, so, Absolutely. There, so, there, so there's a connection right there. and. There's a spiritual, there's going to be a spiritual connection like it is with masonry. And then there has got to be a connection as far as education is concerned because, you know, if, if I wanted to be a mason, I'd have to know something about the organization because I might run into a brother like you that might ask me some questions and I need to be able to answer the questions correctly, you know. Yeah, so. And, and so I think that's important. Yeah, another thing is that the youth of the day, uh, have lost some of the things in transition. They have uh, computer skills and things right at the tip of their fingers, but they don't know the customs and the traditions of the organizations. Uh, we have a component, a uh, Grand Line Scholarship Foundation, that we want to partner up with for creating and 
presenting scholarships to those that are referred to us from the Funk Hall of Fame. Right. So those partnerships are real critical, especially in our community and in the state of Ohio, so that we can move forward and, and enhance the legacy mm -hmm. that was left to us. And I, I think that, that you hit the nail right on the head. You couldn't uh, present it any better. I was talking to my grandson a couple of days ago, and he expressed an interest in joining the Air Force when he graduates from high school. He's 16, he'll be a senior this year. And I said, I think that's great. I said, but what's your GPA? Oh. He said, GPA? He said, I, I guess it's a 3.0. I said, you guess? You don't know what your GPA is, son? Well, Grandpa, I said, let me just say this to you very politely. I said, the next time I ask you that, know what it is. Absolutely. I said, your grade point average is important, and you got to study. You can't come home and play computer games. Right. You got to come home and open them books up and study. And so there's a lot of things happening with the Funk Museum besides just music. And we want these kids, because like was alluded to earlier, music was taken and music education was taken out of the school system. And so these kids will come through grade school, high school, and even college. I worked at Central State for 23 years. Unless you were in the band and, or on the radio at WCSU, you didn't know a lot about music. And the music that you listened to was the music of today, in which we both know what it is. And so um, there's got to be an educational piece because I'm at an institution of higher education and nobody knows anything That's about probably. music, you know, and it, it would just blow me away. And so um, this organization that has developed, that is moving forward with, you know, good people like you and, 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 and the Masonic Lodge and good people like Joey Williams and Fred Strayhorn and Keith Harrison and other people that are involved in it will make this thing come to fruition. Well, those individuals that you mentioned, especially Keith Harrison, and I have a rich historical legacy back when we, I used to book uh, entertainment here in Dayton before I got really involved with the Masonic Order from 71 to about 82. Okay. You know, whether the Howl Players, Cameo, Midnight Star, right? all those organizations, but what one thing that stuck with the education piece is that most all of us took some type of music lessons in schools right. that was available, which gave us discipline, gave us structure, and it taught us about our history and legacy and where those instruments actually came from right. and who had them. So that's an important component for us to provide that type of support for education with the Funk Music Hall of Fame. And I, you know, I keep hearing Stiver School of the Arts yeah. and how good they are. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure they are, no criticism on my part. But I'm wondering when a youngster is accepted into the School of the Arts and wants to play a certain instrument, do they study the person that created that instrument? and know the history of that instrument, and know a little bit of background of that instrument, because that would make me feel very comfortable, because like you said, at Westwood, when I was given a trumpet to play, I knew nothing about it. I was just handed a horn and said, you know, here, try to learn to play this. And didn't do very well, because I didn't know anything about it. If I had maybe known something about it, maybe I would have taken a more of an interest in it mm -hmm. and tried to do better with it. But I didn't know anything about it, so consequently I didn't do very well. And I'm certain that the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's educational piece is going to take you, a youngster, at whatever age you come in, and teach you the history of that particular group. Because mm -hmm. it had to start That's somewhere. That's critical. That's critical. That particular instrument that the group plays, just like Switch. I asked the, uh, one of the band members of Switch, why do you call yourself Switch? And he responded, because we all switch on to different groups. That means everybody on different instruments. I mean, everybody in that group could play a different instrument. That means if I come into that group, I need to know how to play the drums, the bass, the lead, the horn, everything. That's why they were called Switch. And that's unique. That sounds like Roger. Yeah. Everybody had to play every instrument in the group. 
when, and I didn't get a chance to talk to Janetta about this, but when Roger was little Roger, he would, through osmosis, stand outside a club in Cincinnati, Ohio, and watch a guy perform outside the club through osmosis. And I say through osmosis because he wasn't playing the guitar. He was like five or six years old. And that guy's name was Jimi Hendrix. And he oh, was man. a great musician. And Sugar did the same thing. A lot of the music that they play came out of the emphasis of what Jimi Hendrix did back in the 60s, 50s and 60s. And so, um, but they studied. They studied the masters yes. and became the masters themselves, yeah. like you. you stu I'm sure in the Masonic Lodge, you studied the masters. Absolutely. And you became the grandmaster. Absolutely. And that's why that's critical that our youth have those type of leaders with that type of legacy that they can emulate and be proud of what it is that they contribute to our legacy. They, they have to have people like Roger and Jimi Hendrix and, and Bootsy and Junie. Exactly. And Marvin Pierce went to Westwood. Yeah. The horn player, uh, he and his brother were up at uh, Westwood. So along with the Logan family, the, the whole, whole family was there. The whole, whole family. And, and, and everybody yeah. had to play an instrument too. Everybody had to play an instrument, <laughs> whether you wanted to <laughs> or, or not. not. You had to play an instrument. I remember uh, uh, Mr. Manus and, 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 and uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Fisher was yeah. there. And Judge the, Fisher White. Judge Fisher, I remember that very clearly. Um, and so you're right, but see that's not being done today so when that comes to fruition, it's going to be something new for these youngsters. It's going to be like, huh? You know, because even at Central State University, and I use Central State which, and Wilberforce, which is not critical, which I'm not trying to criticize, but if you didn't sing in the choir at Central State or play in the band, then you didn't know much about music. Oh, and wow. the music that you listen to, and I'll never, you know, I saw it every day. I witnessed it for 23 years because we didn't play rap music at WCSU. And so the kids that would come in the Cosby Center to take class or go on the radio station, you could hear the boom and the thumping in the cars when they pulled up to the building. You could hear, you could hear it a, a, a block, two away. blocks away. That's how loud it was. In the wintertime when the windows were rolled up. Okay, as soon as they got out the car and walked in the Cosby Center and ran into that urban jazz format, the whole personality said, hey, Dr. Logan, how you doing? Big smile, the whole nine yards. So music does have an effect on the human psyche. We, we, I've seen it over and over and over again. Just like the Masonic Lodge has an effect on the human psyche. When you take a young brother in that is lost, who needs some guidance, you guys give him the guidance, correct? You can support him, he and his family, uh, as much as we can. Uh, without material injury to ourselves or our families, we do that. That's what made us great and have the legacy that we have. Oftentimes, that's what we did. We relied on one another's skill sets, uh, right. whether it was in music or Pass it on. passing it passing down. But you have to have uh, the cultural exposure, like in music, because that's where we come from. Our history and legacy from the mother country is that's what we did and, and that was served a purpose for everything that we had to do whether it was for a family gathering for a celebration but that was always an integral part of our lifestyle I've had two white guys that are in the Masonic Lodge tell me that they were going to purge both Masonic Lodges together because there's us and there's them. And there's not too many of us with them and there's not too many of them with us. And I've had these two guys tell me that that's what they were going to do. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I mean, I think that that's long overdue. Is that a possibility? Is that ever going to happen? Or what's your take on that? That's already happened. In 1993, when I was Grand Trustee at Large under most worshipful grandmaster, and you probably know Stephen Reese Sr. out of Cincinnati, big I promoter. His I know Steve. daughter is a representative for the 33rd District, Alicia. Okay. Uh, we signed an agreement uh, of recognition where we do visit and we 
do things together collectively now uh, okay. throughout the jurisdiction of Ohio. Some other states' uh, jurisdictions being, um, they have their own anonymity. So, okay. so they have to themselves agree to, to sign that kind of recognition. But we've had it since 1993. Excellent. Yes, we, we got is it together. Because isn't the mission the same? It mission exactly the same. Yeah. And to believe it or not, Prince Hall was actually initiated. Prince Hall and 14 others were initiated in the 441 Irish Registry. And That's Prince Hall being a black man. man. Yeah. Black man, a man of color, and 14 other brothers. Right. The Irish Registry, that didn't look like him, they initiated him into masonry. See? So you forget somewhere the along, Somewhere along the line... Those lines got blurred and disappeared, and then it was us over here and them over there talking about the same mission, which I always thought was a little confusing to me. And I'm glad to hear what I just heard from you, and I hope it continues that way and continues to grow because I, had a, I have a friend, he's deceased now, who would go in that Masonic Lodge over in uh, Dayton View uh -huh. and go through the ritual and go through the worship and everything, and I've never been in it. Oh, we got to take you through there. Just go through a tour because that's then something ongoing for. We've been doing table lodges. We've been doing uh, educational programs, degree work together. We travel throughout the state. So we are actually one family, and, and that's my mission. One God, one family, and one vision. That's, Excellent. that's our motto. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Funk Chronicle with yours truly, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center with my honored guest, Grandmaster Mr. Daryl Smith. And leave us with something for the Funk Museum, Daryl. The Funk Museum is something that we have expired a half for years, and I don't know why someone didn't have a vision earlier, but this is a tremendous opportunity for all of us to be a part of with our community throughout the states and throughout our United States because when you leave Ohio and you talk about funk music, they always talk about Dayton, Ohio. So the Funk Music Hall of Fame is on the map globally and it's, it's critical that we support it in any manner we can, whether it be monetarily, uh, be in, in your talents, uh, marketing skills, whatever you had to offer, I would like to see this be a bigger, pro bigger than maybe some edifice in Washington, D.C. at one time. And to that, I want to thank you and uh, especially David Webb for his untiring efforts and leadership uh, to make this vision a dream a reality. Grandmaster, thank you. My brother, God bless. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Join us next time. Bye-bye.